as promised, a video on proving a negative, or as I actually said in my previous video, disproving a negative, but that was just my misspeaking, so get over it. All right, so um, as you might have imagined, I'm going to talk about proving a negative in this video. Another way that people uh, will, will say this is the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. This is sometimes true, and it's sometimes false. You can sometimes prove, prove a negative, and other times not prove a negative. So suppose there's a table in your house, for instance, and I, I say, you know, there is a beautiful uh, three-foot-high wedding cake on that table. And by wedding cake, what I mean to say is that it is, it, it's a, a food item. It is made up of matter. It occupies space. It reflects light. And you look at the table, and there's nothing in that description on that table. You can say, well, um, there, there's no object on this table that is yay high, that is a food item, that is occupying space, made up of matter, reflecting light. Uh, so, you can prove the negative there. You can prove that it's not true that a cake exists there. If I give you uh, a different proposition, that there exists uh, a wedding cake somewhere in the universe, then it's not good enough to just look on that table and say there's no cake here, because all I'll say in response to that is, you're right. There's not a cake on that table. Now all you have to do is check the entire rest of the universe, and you have to do it simultaneously. In principle, that's possible. In practice, it isn't. Uh, we have no technology to be able to do that, although there's a uh, well, as I mentioned, in, theoretically, it's not impossible to be able to look everywhere in the universe at the same time, but as a physical limitation, it simply is, so that is practically impossible. Okay. Um, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence line is not... What they should say is a, uh, absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. That's true, but uh, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence is only true sometimes. So... Um, for any object in the world, uh, or any event that, that happened, or anything like that, if it's true that it exists or it happened, there are going to be other things that will also be true. Like a tornado touching down in a trailer park. You immediately know what you should expect to see if a tornado touched down there. And by tornado, I mean a, a whirling funnel, a whirling vortex of rapidly moving wind that once it touches down on, on the ground, it leaves a, a trail of destruction in its path. And so someone says, last night, a, uh, a tornado touched down in this trailer park, and then we go look today, and it's perfectly pristine. Nothing's out of place. Uh, uh, you know, a perfectly put together place. You can say, well, no tornado touched down here last night. Now, there's a defeater to that. The person could intervene by saying, actually, there was just that uh, before you got here, everyone worked really, really hard and built everything back up and put it nice and perfect. But if the proposition is about a trailer park you're standing in, and the person says, a trailer park uh, hit here three seconds ago, then you can look, because there's, there's no way to re, you know, put that back together in, in that amount of time. So that one you, you can disprove uh, pretty directly. So, um, so long as whatever it is the person is claiming is true should have other consequences. If you don't find those other consequences, those other things that also have to be true, then you can prove the negation of the proposition. Uh, this happens in court a lot. Uh, you know, um, the prosecutor will say this person murdered XYZ people at ABC time, and um, the, the person can positive, positively prove he didn't commit the murder by showing that he was out of the country at the time by some way. Uh, you know, he was on the television giving an interview in Madrid when he was supposedly in New York murdering someone. You can, you can prove that negative. You can prove that person did not do a thing he's alleged to do. Now, showing that he was in Madrid at some particular time giving some particular interview doesn't say he's never killed anybody. He just says that he didn't do this particular murder. Now, if we go back to the cake example, and what by cake what I meant is it's invisible, it occupies no space, it's not made up of matter, it doesn't interact in any way in this universe, uh, what you could say in response to me there is, well, you shouldn't be calling that a cake, uh, and, and that's one, and, and two, uh, it doesn't exist. And that's because of something, uh, something called the identity of indiscernibles. If you have two things, thing A and thing B, and they have all the same properties in common, and uh, there aren't any properties that they don't have in common, so that is to say that everything that's true about thing A is also th true about thing B, and there's nothing true about one or the other that's not also true about the, the opposite one, then uh, by the identity of uh, indiscernibles, uh, Leibniz construction, by the way, you can say that those two things are actually the same thing. So when you get to the theist-atheist debate and someone talks about the word God, you need to find out what it is that's being packed into the label God. What is God being used to signify? 
if it's um, if it has certain properties and has done certain things and uh, the doing of those things should leave consequences should leave effects and you don't find those effects then you can say one of two things depending on when it's supposed to have happened you can say uh, it didn't happen because it's so recent uh, and the evidence wouldn't have decayed by now and the evidence isn't found therefore that event didn't happen that doesn't positively disprove the god it just positively proves that that particular god did that particular thing uh, or what you could say is that it's been so long that there's no more there's no longer any evidence left of it uh, so it could have existed but it doesn't now and the most that you can say there is the the absence of that evidence is consistent with the thing not having happened they're indiscer it's indiscernible whether it was an, an event that happened and left no evidence or happened so long ago the evidence is gone or if it's an event that simply did not happen uh, so you need to find out what it is they're proposing what it is they're they're uh, packing into the label god and then maybe on a case case by case basis you can if not positively prove that that god doesn't exist at least it doesn't exist in that respect it, uh, it's not doing the things that the person's claiming that it does or something of that nature by the identity of indiscernibles another another type of god could be one that uh, that um, it's not an interventionist god it doesn't care about us it's never done anything in this universe what what you can say there is um, something that uh, that exists but does nothing uh, leaves no effects doesn't interact has never been here is indistinguishable from something that doesn't exist and because they are indistinguishable in all respects then what you can say is that uh, you know, the one is the other and since they're the same thing they're the uh, you know they are this because they're identical you can say that that thing doesn't exist you can prove that that thing doesn't exist by that uh, identity of indiscernibles I talked about so those are some things that that uh, can be the neg some negatives that can be proved and then there are other negatives that can't be proved so when a person bandies about that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence uh, you have a feather in your quill uh, arrow in your your quiver your quiver full to be able to use to say actually that's not always the case sometimes yes sometimes no and in those instances what you need to do is whatever the thing being proposed is be it your god or pixie, whatever it is make sure the person gives you a well-defined notion of what it is they mean by that particular word and uh, that does a couple of things. One, if once you start claiming it does things or claiming it operates in a certain way or claiming it has certain properties, that can be checked. And two, it forces the person to actually not use a vacuous term. They have to start using something that's well defined. And if you want to, if you want to um, talk talk about that or watch someone talk about that more more at length, uh, Sean Carroll recently had a debate with William Lane Craig, and one of Sean Carroll's uh, points that he kept harping on in the debate, kept plugging in the debate, is the fact that God is not well defined. Um, religion is not well defined. Alright, so those are some things for you to run around with now. Um, if you didn't already know, otherwise, have a good day.